Hi and welcome, this is Martin from CitrusLab.dk. In this video we'll have a look at using Microsoft MDT and Windows PowerShell with Microsoft Azure. The agenda for today will be creating a new virtual machine in Azure using PowerShell, joining the new virtual machine to the domain using Azure RM VM extensions, we're going to take a short tour of the Azure portal, we're going to start an MDT task sequence using PowerShell, and lastly, we'll verify the machine after the deployment. So let's jump over to the demo. We're going to start at looking at the Microsoft Azure portal. And we're going to click on the resource groups. We see that I have one resource group called Citrus Labs Azure. And you can see the resources I have. So I have a domain controller, I have some VPN stuff, some IoT I just deployed last week, and a network security group. So if we jump over to PowerShell, ISC. We can see they have the agenda pretty much outlined. We have to create Azure VM. We have joined the Azure VM to the main. We have a synchronization of my Azure directory, which we will also do manually. We're going to get the MAC address from the virtual machine. Then we're going to update the custom settings any file. And then we're going to create the Zilla workflow. So let's hit start. If we jump back to the Azure portal and hit refresh, and we're going to hit refresh once more, then we can see we have a network interface called Azure IIS Share 1. And if we have refresh once more, we can see we have the virtual machine as well. If we're going to dig into the virtual machine, you can see that it has a status of creating. You can see that it's a standard DS2 v2 with two CPUs and seven gigs of memory. We do not have a public IP address. And we have it joined to the Azure, the Citrix Lab Azure subnet. If we hit the networking tab, we can see that it has an IP address of 192.168.37.5. And we have some custom rules on the network security group we have. So we are allowing RDP and WinRM, HTTP and HTTPS. If we hit on the disks, you can see we are using the standard LRS, which is the slow disks on Azure. If we hit configuration, we can see that we can register this virtual machine with Azure Active Directory, but we're not going to do this this time. If we have properties, we can see a lot of the information we already saw on, on the overview pane, like the status, the virtual machine, IP address, that is the Windows machine. But later on, we'll also be able to see the agent version and status. In Azure, you have the possibility to shut down the machines automatically, and you can do that on a scheduled base, and remember to choose the right time zone. You can also send notifications on a webhook or an email address. But again, we're not going to use this in the demo. If you go down under the monitoring tab and hit the diagram button, you can see that the, the connections between the Azure virtual machine, the disks and the virtual network. You can also choose to redeploy and reset the passwords, which are good things to know in, in Azure. So jumping back to the PowerShell ISE, we'll see that the script hasn't completed yet. So uh, while we're waiting for that to complete, we'll have a look in the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So let's open the workbench. Let's go under the task sequences. And I have a folder called Azure. And under the Azure folder, I have an IIS server in Azure task sequence. You can see that the task sequence has a state restore. So let's hit properties and go on the task sequence. We'll see there's no OS deployment in here, but we're going to install the roles for Windows Server 2016. And you can see I've selected a bunch of roles and features on the web services. I'm not going to use any Windows updating on this one, just because it's going to take too long. So this section has been speeded up, so instead of taking about two and a half minutes, I think it's about 25 seconds. 
you now see that the volume of the VM has completed. It took 6 minutes and 17 seconds. Okay, if we're gonna jump to my domain control for just a second. Because we are gonna look at the Azure DC01 and make sure that the new virtual machine is showing under the computers tab. And when it, it appears here, I'm gonna do a synchronization of the actual directory to make sure it also shows on my on-premise domain controller. Otherwise the, the remote WinRM won't work for my deployment server. And there we go. Now we have the server in the Active Directory in Azure. And we can see we don't have it in the local still. So we're going to own the sites and services and do the replication. And go ahead and refresh on the computers a few times until it shows up. And we now have it on-premise as well. So let's switch back to the deployment server. We can see the next job actually joining the domain hasn't completed yet. But it's still on the way. And while we're waiting, let's open up the remote desktop so we can join. Gonna connect to the Zero One machine using my Active Directory credentials, and we can see that it's joining on the RDP session now. Since this is the first time running RDP to the server, it will take quite some time. But you can just follow along on the screen. On the left side, you can see that several of the scripts has completed. So, among other things, we got the MAC address of the virtual machine. You can now see on the right side that the RDP says is, is almost ready. It's just doing the personalization. And now we can see on the left side that every script I had running, all function in the script I had, has completed. So now we're just waiting for the RDP session, which is completed now. I'm going to start a task manager, just to show what's going on on the server. I'm going to hit more details and the details tab. And just to show that it's a clean machine, you can see that there's no web services or IIS management under the tools. So in a few minutes, I think it's, you'll see a cscript.exe appearing on, on, this, on the processes. And that's the start of the task sequences, or start of NDT that will later on be a task sequence. So now you see we have the cscript.exe running, and that in turn starts the bdd.run. What, what this is doing right now in the background is determining which task sequence that it needs to be run. And then it will be starting it automatically based on the MAC address. You'll also see now that we have a mhhta.exe that's also part of the deployment toolkit. And now you can see that the task sequence has started. This deployment has been sped up to 69 times. So in reality, it lasts 25 minutes. But in this video, we're going to short that down to around 25 seconds, I think. So you can see that normally on the installation, we are on 50% CPU load. But it's still taking a long time on Azure. Now it has completed. 
So let's take a look on the IIS. So we can see we have it installed now. Gonna open the window for it. So you see we have a default site, we have the application pools. So let's turn browse it just to see the default page there as well. And there we have it, a working IIS in Asia deployed with MDT. So what we've seen now is how to use PowerShell to deploy a virtual machine in Asia. We've been using the same PowerShell to actually join the server to the domain. And we've seen how to use Microsoft Deployment Toolkit to configure services and software in this virtual machine. There's no special requirements to actually do any of this deployment. It's free tools, PowerShell and Microsoft Deployment Toolkits are free. So if you have any feedback on this video, you can reach out to me on the YouTube channel or on Twitter with my handle mracket. Thank you for watching and I hope we'll see you soon again.